The off season is well and truly here, which is great news for those cyclists who have had a long, hard season and are desperate for a break, and terrible news for those cyclists like me who have some severe motivation problems. But if you're in the latter, don't worry, because I'm here with some top tips for making the most of your off season. When it comes to my off season, even though it's still about covering base miles, I like to try and think about it a little bit differently. I think about it as a way to see my mates or, more importantly, eat lots of food. Punishing yourself in the cold and the rain is just going to make you miserable. And if you become miserable, you're just going to demotivate yourself and that will make for a very long winter indeed. So an example of a off season ride that I might do is on a Saturday, I would ride probably about 70 kilometers just to a cafe that me and my mates really like and then ride home. We still do the miles, but it doesn't feel like a chore and it's a way to keep yourself motivated when you're riding in the winter. I know that a great way to motivate myself is to plan the year ahead. And right now, that year seems far enough away that I actually think I can achieve the mileage number that I set myself with some mates in the pub. I also will plan in a lot of 2019 goals on Strava and genuinely believe that I can do those too. And it's about now that me and my riding buddies will book maybe a weekend away in the future or our sportives, maybe a Grand Fondo or even a holiday abroad to somewhere like Mallorca or the Alps to help us get through the dreary weather that's outside. One of the worst things about riding in the British winter is feeling like you have to go outside in lots of uncomfortable layers. But for most British conditions, that's not actually that necessary. And unless the weather is really horrid outside, going out in just a few key items of versatile and quality kit can keep you protected and not let you look like the Michelin man. I'm perfectly happy to go riding in something like this, the DHB Aeron Rain Defense Jersey. It's a good quality soft shell that's weather resistant too. A jersey like this, which is designed to be your outer layer without needing a jacket on top, is designed to offer a compromise between protection from the elements, weight and breathability. It works so well because the Polartec PowerShield Pro material is made up of three layers. The membrane, which is the middle layer of the fabric, is very water resistant and will hold off showers and mucky roads brilliantly. It's also windproof for additional insulation. So the result is that you're protected from all but the worst of the weather without ever feeling uncomfortable. These types of jerseys are really versatile and with a temperature range from 8 degrees to 14 degrees, they're pretty much suited to most of the British winter days. But pair them with a good quality base layer and a good gilet and they can definitely go colder than that. I hear a lot of riders say that they can't keep their hands and feet warm when they're on a bike ride. And I used to struggle with this a lot as well. And of course you can try wearing lots of gloves or good overshoes to help insulate your feet. But by layering correctly and heating your core properly, you can leave the thicker gloves at home and head out with just a thinner pair on, which will leave you feeling more in control. So this works because if you heat your core properly, you actually heat the blood that's going to your extremities, which will help keep your hands and feet warmer. So I'd start with a good base layer, and I'd recommend a merino one if you can, just because they don't smell as much and you can get more use out of them in between washes. Then I'd pair it with a good jersey, something like this, which is weather resistant, windproof and very insulating. And on top of that, I'd then maybe put a gilet. Around my neck, I'll usually wear a buff because this helps trap the heat in on your core. And then on the top of my head, I'll always wear a hat. That'll either be a normal cap if it's a bit milder or merino wool hat if it's particularly cold. And this just helps stop excess heat escaping through the top of your head. So I find that works really well for me, but it is a little bit different for everyone, so it might just take a bit of trial and error to work out. But if you can get it right, then you might finally be able to keep your hands and feet that little bit warmer on your bike ride. The off season is also a really good time to make sure your bike is in good working order, especially if it's your best bike that you're gonna put away for the bad weather. 
So I usually start with the gears. I like to make sure that they're shifting properly and that it doesn't need indexing. And if it does, I will check the cables. Are they worn? Do they need replacing? It's also a good time to check the chain. Is it stretched? And is the cassette in need of replacing as well? Because if they're both worn, they need to go. It's time to get some new parts. And if you're using hydraulic brakes, it's also a good time to check that they don't need bleeding or to check the level of the pad in the caliper as well. If you do want to check how much life is left in your disc brake pads, you'll just need to pull them out of the caliper, like so. And then we're basically looking to see how much life is left. So you're looking at the amount of material on the back plate here. And you can see that these are pads with actually quite a lot of life left in them. But a good way to test is to put the spring on them, so when they're together like so, and if there's a lot of pad on this side of the spring, you're good, that's fine. But if there's not much pad there, then chances are they need replacing. Because the last thing you want to have is the metal of the back plate breaking on the metal of the rotor, which is just going to write off your rotors and they'll need replacing as well. When it's wet outside or the roads are particularly saturated with water, I'll usually wear a set of water resistant bib ties. Something like the DHB Aeron rain defense tights will do nicely because of their special nanosphere technology which prevents water saturating the kit. These tights are designed to remain water repellent for longer than most. The yarns are DWR coated before the fabric is made and then again afterwards, which means the tights can protect you better and for much longer than is normal. This is an important distinction from a water repellent coating applied to the exterior of the fabric, which can wash off quite easily. Try to protect your kit as best as you can. So don't use fabric softeners, which will remove the nice beading properties of your water resistant garments. We'd also recommend putting your stuff through the machine on an extra rinse cycle at the end, because detergents can build up in the fabric and prevent it working properly. If this does happen, using a technical wash such as Nick Wax will reapply the protective treatment. Another tip to give your kit's repellency a boost is by reactivating it with heat treatment. This can be done in a dryer on a low heat setting, or even with an iron, again on a low setting, or just by hanging up your garment in a hot airing cupboard. But don't go against the care instructions on the label. If it says not to tumble dry, then please do not, because you could damage your kit. Going off-road in the winter can do wonders for your road riding when the season comes back around. For starters, it definitely helps your cycling technique and studies have proven that mountain bikers actually have the best pedalling efficiency of any cyclists because they need to be able to put the power down evenly to keep traction when riding through the mud or up short, sharp climbs. Going off-road is also great because it just doesn't last very long, which is perfect for cold winter days. Cross races are a great example of this where you can get a really intense cardiovascular workout in an hour or less. Whereas if you were to do your normal training on the road, you'd probably end up having to ride for a few hours at least in the freezing rain and the cold. Finally, off-road riding is just really good fun. So whether that's mountain biking or cross riding, it's really psychologically important that you keep yourself stimulated in the off season and not to feel like riding is a chore or something that you get bored of. If you do that, it's gonna feel like a very long off season indeed. So those are my top tips for making the most of the off season and hopefully they'll keep you warm and dry, but most importantly, entertained. Now, if you have any top tips yourself, please leave them in the comments section below. And if you haven't already, hit like and subscribe to see more great content from Cycling Weekly.